here, see? Now, tell your dad to send money for her burial, or I'll bring them to Chile. Tell him definitively to send the money for her burial. He needs to send me the money to bury her now. That's what he wanted, to see her dead. Well, there you have it, there you have it. This audio you just heard seemed like some kind of premonition of the tragic end of Yuneski Ferrer. And it was this person, a 17-year-old girl, calm and very happy with a promising future and who dreamed of studying forensic medicine and seeing the whole world. She was also a fan of TikTok. She loved doing these typical trending trends, dancing and those things. The youngest of three sisters, she had a strong bond with all, but was particularly close to her 19-year-old sister, Yuna Eileen, from whom she was inseparable. However, everything changed for the worse from one moment to the next. The strange and suspicious death of the teenager went viral on social media after her sister, Junaylin Ferrer, denounced through a video that supposedly their mother had something to do with it. The origin of the Ferrer Carrizo family was Venezuelan, but years ago they had to leave their native country to seek a better future abroad due to the economic situation that did not allow them to live well. The parents of the young woman Martin Ferrer and Yunavis Carrizo and their three daughters settled in Peru, but family problems caused them to be unable to continue living under the same roof and that's how the marriage separated. The father chose to live in Chile, South America, with his daughter Yuneli, who followed his path. On the other hand, the mother, along with her two remaining daughters, including Yuneski herself, stayed in Peru. From the first moment, Yuneli knew that staying with her mother was not an option. This was due to the alleged verbal and physical abuse from the woman towards all her daughters. The young woman knew that the best option was to move to Chile with her father and tried to convince Yuneski to go with them. But the youngest refused and chose to stay with her mother to spend a vacation with her. But the day she made that decision, unfortunately, everything would change and for the worse. According to the older sister, Yuneski wanted to take care of her mom and accompany her on her trip from Peru to Maracaibo in Venezuela. And then she would go to Chile. But Yuneski and her mother returned to their country of origin and it didn't seem like she was going to return soon. Three and a half months passed when the father began to start the procedures for Yuneski to reunite with them in Chile, accompanied by an adult because the young woman was underage at that time. Everything was ready. The trip was planned and they prepared the departure secretly from the mother because they feared she would do something to Yuneski because they knew she would not allow him to go with his father. They had bought tickets for a flight that was leaving on July 11, 2022. But what they didn't know was that Yuneski would never manage to get on that plane. Days before the departure to Chile, Junaylin had an active conversation with her sister to make sure she was okay. But the last few days, she had noticed her overwhelmed by problems at home, so much so that she had asked her in tears to get her out of there as soon as possible. She couldn't bear her mother's abuse anymore. But on Friday, my mom punished her. She took away her cell phone. I talked to a cousin with her who advised not to send her due to my mom's anger. It was... It was the same day that he had to take the flight that Yuneski was finally able to get in touch with his sister again because he had managed to get the cell phone from his other sister. But to add more terror to the whole situation, in the call he would have begged her to come and get him as soon as possible because his mother was going to take his life. Then there was a deathly silence and the young woman realized that the call had suddenly ended. I called, 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 called. None of them answered. After about 10 minutes, my sister calls me from my grandmother's house that my mom was left alone at home with my brother. I asked her to calm down and tell me what happened, to explain whatever it was. They didn't let me talk to her. So desperate, Yunalyn asked her whole family about her sister, but everyone gave the same excuse that they were busy making lunch. She also asked her grandmother and her aunt, but they responded that they couldn't get involved. Yunilin asked them to confirm that Yuneski was okay, but their response was that they didn't have a key to get into the house and that everything was locked up. By that time, confusion was overwhelming her and she suspected that something bad had happened to her younger sister. Her suspicions would be confirmed hours later when she again insisted her sister give her some information that Yuneski was safe and sound. Bewildered, the young woman heard her sister say something that shook her. 
Her older sister said she felt something in her chest, a strange sensation that made her quickly go to their mother's house. And when she entered Uneski's room, she found her hanged in her bedroom closet. Homicide Squad officers arrived at 11 in the morning on July 9, 2022 at the Carrizo family's home located in the 5 de Julio neighborhood in Maracaibo. They entered the room that belonged to the girl where they found her lifeless on the bed. The authorities interviewed the relatives who commented that she had taken her own life and that supposedly her sister had found her and had taken her down from the place where she hanged herself. The closet that was next to the bed was no more than 1 meter 50 high and didn't even have rods to hang clothes. The family, in the same way, told the police about the possible reasons why Uneski might have decided to end her life. According to them, it was supposedly because the young woman had been suffering from depression for two months due to the fact that when she returned from Peru, she was forced to distance herself from her romantic partner and had threatened to take her own life if she did not return to that country to be with him. They also added that the teenager had also tried to take her own life a few years ago. When her father and sister on the other hand found out about her tragic end, they obviously couldn't believe it. Uneski was all set for his trip to Chile. She calls me in tears, wanting to leave and asking me to come get her. My dad and I were making moves to bring her back with a companion for her return since she's underage. I had everything ready, her clothes, her papers. So her father and older sister couldn't understand why the young girl had made that decision. It simply didn't match her attitudes of the last few days and only increased their suspicions that something else had happened to her in that house and that the maternal family was hiding it from them. Help me spread the video was what the deceased's older sister pleaded in a TikTok video on her personal profile that quickly went viral because She's clearly aggressive. If she knew she was coming here, that's an issue. And obviously my dad and I are afraid that she would do something to her. She calls me on a video call, tells me to go get her now because my mom was going to kill her. The hashtag justice for UNESCO became a trend on social networks in just a few hours and was on the lips of all internet users who shared the video outraged and joined the sister's call for justice. In her complaint video against her mother, Yuna Yilin also blamed her maternal family, who would have been accomplices and would have squared everything so that they believed in her version of the events and that they would have also tried to portray Yuneski as crazy and at the same time depressive, which her sister flatly denied. In addition, she assured that there were precedents to prove her version as there was a complaint made by the father of the young women to the public ministry against his ex-wife for physical abuse against Uneski and Unailin. At the same time, Uneski's father also spoke about what happened and joined the accusations against the mother of his daughters and insisted that she was the one who took their lives that he had no doubt that she could go to such extremes. According to the man, the mother had such a strong character that she could be blinded by anger and take arguments to blows. He then lamented Uneski's good heart, who knew what her mother was capable of and yet had decided to stay with her for a while longer, trying to find a bit of love in her, in his mother. However, he achieved the exact opposite as we know. She ordered the case closure that day. She didn't even want an autopsy to be performed. Everyone who went to the wake knows that she didn't shed a single tear for my sister that there was no grief on my mom's side of the family. That a week after what she had told my sister, Yaya was happily opening her store. Yaya was happily in a pool. Yaya was drinking on the weekends as if nothing. After the public accusations from the paternal family, the relatives of Unibis Unavis, I remind you, is the mother of the young girls did not want to remain silent. Through a live, Catherine Carrizzo, cousin of the mother, shared with her followers the other alleged version of the story, making it clear that Unavis did not kill her and denied the version of Unaili's other daughter. Not only did she 
deny the facts of the other party, but also the abuses that Yuneli had received from her mother and that she had reported in her TikTok videos. The cousin said that the young woman fled from Peru to Chile because her mother had plans to take her daughters to the United States. But Jun Lee would not have accepted because she did not want to separate from her boyfriend. So she decided to escape with him, not before stealing $700 from her mother. With this money, which supposedly the mother had saved for the trip with her daughters to the northern country, Jun Lee would have escaped to Chile and even paid for her boyfriend's ticket because he did not work. The cousin also justified the insults and screams that witnesses claimed to have heard that day, saying that I, the mother, was like that, a screamer, that it was something normal and that's how she raised her daughters. By the way, we have to be very clear about this. The cousin was actually not in Venezuela on the day of the events, but lived in Texas in the United States and would have found out about the death because the maternal family informed her. Still insist that they stop pointing at the mother as a murderer. In other words, she doesn't even know how things happened because she wasn't even in the country. But what Junelina was doing on social media was supposedly a scandal and that thanks to her public statements, the maternal family and especially the mother of the young girls were going through a bad time, being physically and emotionally damaged and they just hope this ends. Martin Ferrer expressed his anger at the corruption of the authorities who investigated his daughter's case and demanded that they speed up what really happened according to Yunelin. An acquaintance of hers would have found out the reason why the case was closed so soon and it would have been because they put money in the middle. Them? I tell all the neighbors around there to shut up that they didn't hear anything. And not to get involved because it wasn't their problem. He... The girl's father contacted the authorities of the Scientific Penal and Criminal Investigation Corps to request that the investigation be reopened, that an exhumation of the corpse be carried out, and an expert examination at the scene of the events. In response to this, the General Commissioner was going to send a commission from Caracas to redo the investigations, although Martin Ferrer is still waiting for them to keep their word. Similarly, and with no intention of standing idly by, the father also asked for his participation to the prosecutor, Tarek William Zapp, responsible for reopening the case of the famous rapper Cancerbero, also dead under suspicious circumstances, and who, like Yuneski, would have allegedly taken his own life. But so far, he has not provided any support to the case. Then, in a live broadcast on Instagram, which was carried out by the law expert Lorena Vargas, where the father and sister participated, they stated that the case of the alleged killer of the minor is stagnant and that they had given power to a lawyer from Venezuela to take charge of the necessary investigations. On the other hand, Yuneski's father and sister publicly asked for someone to declare what they heard or saw on the day of the events and promised that the statement would be anonymous, that there would be no risk and that it would be taken by officials designated from Caracas. The father of the deceased also emphasized that there were many inconsistencies and unanswered questions in his daughter's death and asked the authorities not to let the mother go free who harmed his daughter and can now harm anyone as she has no heart or limits. Currently, those who believe that Yuneski could not have ended her own life are waiting for authorization to arrive in Venezuela so that her lawyer can make the necessary arrangements to start a new investigation. Thanks to Juni Lin's viral video, the case has gained more relevance and it is expected that the Venezuelan authorities will act on the issue in which more and more people are joining in their favor. Still no news seems to be available. The truth is that the case to this day continues to generate outrage among internet users and continues to cause negative reactions on social media. But what is clear is that the father and his older sister will continue to fight tirelessly until they find the truth, demanding the justice that UNESCO deserves to rest in peace. Remember that I now have three channels on YouTube. This one where you can find this type of cases, which is Pepe Mystery. There's also the investigation where not only I narrate, another person also narrates. And there you find everything that has to do with mystery, except for crimes and short videos, Pepe Mystery Chores. I'm Pepe Mystery on Facebook, focusing on investigation.